union mines in the area. And speaking of things getting better for the miners, before 1900, this was the only reason that this chute stops up above us here 60 feet. The vein of coal turned to rocks and the miners stopped. Otherwise, it would have continued on right to the top of the mountain. The vein of coal lays in between the two stratas of rock. Up here's the top rock, down here the bottom. The coal is dynamited out in between the two stratas of rock, and then you put your timber from the bottom rock to the top rock. And 96% of all the anthracite coal in the United States, and three-fourths of the world's supply of anthracite coal, is right here in these 500 square miles of Pennsylvania. And this is the only place in the United States where the veins of coal do run on vertical pitches like this. Elsewhere in the United States and throughout the world, that's where the veins of coal are flat. And that allows the miners to use machinery to cut and claw and dig out the coal. Well, there's no machinery made that can work at this great vertical pitch, so the coal has to be mined manually. And here I can show you a petrified tree. about that guy up there. <laughs> okay, that's just an old rubber rat up there, okay, that guy there, okay. But the old miners used to like if they seen a couple of rats in the mine, if they seen a few rats in the mine, then they knew the ventilation was good. And it was an old saying, if you see the rats leaving the mine, it would be a good idea to leave yourself. They thought they were good detectors of ground vibration. Sometimes they were used to detect methane gas as well. Now this is what I use, this flame safety is to the top. So the miner would bring the canary in the mine in his cage, hold the canary up there and watch the canary. If that canary became all nervous and panicky in the cage at that time, the miner then knew he was in a deadly gas. Actually, the canary was suffocating in the cage, but back at that time, it was the only means of detection that they did have. Then they invented these lanterns. This lantern operates off of the principle that heat attracts. The air in the outside atmosphere is attracted into the lantern because of the heat of the flame. If there's methane gas in the air, I'll burn the methane gas with my flame, naturally rising the flame and making it burn with a bluish tint. Another gas I test for every morning with this lantern is what we call black damp. It's lack of oxygen. It's heavy and found close to the gangway floor. So I get my lantern now close to the gangway floor and once again read my flame. Due to lack of oxygen, that will snuff the flame out. Just the opposite of the methane gas. Okay, Spill out on the ground. 
But that guy gets pretty good at his job, though, because when he spills on the ground, he has to shovel back up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Demon meeting out of the ground all over the place. So. The fire over in Centralia will burn down for 650 feet. Then it hits the water level over there. Then it burns in the east-west direction. Now, the fire is going to continue to burn for another 100 years. Uh, it isn't going to affect any more towns or... You think it will spread? The, could it spread to other uh, veins? It's definitely, it definitely did spread to other veins, yes. Uh, the fire started in the vein of coal that we're standing on right now. This is the vein of coal that the fire started on, on the surface of the mountain over there. Uh, when you're driving through the area, you see the large crevices left in the mountain? That's where they dug the coal from the surface with the large power equipment. Now, before the 1960s, uh, there were no mine reclamation laws making the coal coming back to those pits. Uh, they would abandon those big, large pits and move on. Well, it became very convenient for the people in Centralia to throw all of their garbage and trash in one of those stripping pits. At the bottom of the pit was an exposed vein of coal. The garbage and trash caught on fire, ignited the vein of coal at the bottom of the pit, and down into the ground, the way the coal was burned away. Uh, now, local fire departments did try to extinguish the fire, but 37 years ago, you know, the fire equipment and tanker trucks surely were dirty. Yeah. 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 see it all at the same time, but make sure you take a look at this little vein of coal right here while you're walking through here. It's just a small vein of coal. It was too small for the miners to work. So the old miners nicknamed these little veins of coal leader veins. You just lead the miners on, they don't get any thicker. If you take a look at this coal right here above me, where I have my light shining there, you can see why the anthracite coal got its name Black Diamonds, because that coal right there is 90% carbon, a pure diamond is only 100% carbon. Now we'll get on this Here's the Mammoth Bay where we made our first stop coming in. Here's where we're standing right now at our Buck Mountain Bay. Right now we're 1,800 feet into the mountain and it would be 400 feet straight outside from where we're standing. Now when we're leaving the mine, when we get 300 feet from outside, you'll feel us going down a slight incline. That's as close to outside as the mules ever made it. On top of the incline they would unhook and the weight of the coal car would carry itself outside from there on its own. Outside waiting on the loaded cars were 14, 15 year old boys. We call them runners. As the cars rolled by, they'd run alongside of the cars, and they would stick sprags and wedges in the wheels to stop and slow the cars down. <laughs> that job was hard on the fingers, too. But by that time, yeah, at that time, that old mule was back inside the mine for another loaded car. So the mules never made it outside. They would live underground. In different places throughout the mine, there would be stalls erected to actually house those mules. Now, this mine only employed 10, but the same company owned this mine. Three miles to the west of us here, they had another mine employing 2,000 men and 100 mules. So they had 100 mules living inside that coal mine. They were sure-footed, and they didn't get near as sick as a horse. That's why the mules were chosen to do the mine work. A lot of those old mules would go blind from being in the darkness all 